Hey, welcome back to the Drawing Database. So we're in the uh, long post session uh, two now, session two with the st charcoal and the stumped or blended charcoal on the green tone paper with the Stephen Post long pose here. So now we're continuing on, obviously with the foot here, really starting to begin to give that some more uh, sophisticated, um, more specific shape uh, to the the foot structure working now here with the, um, the Japanese mono uh, mono eraser which is the smallest I use there's actually a smaller one you can get it's almost kind of a little bit bigger than than um, oh, a pinpoint it's a little bigger than that but it gets some nice fine detail but I find it's a little too small for generally uh, what I want to do or what I need to do so I use that Japanese mono eraser mostly and here I'm just erasing out the uh, toe structure in the light and dark structure of what I've drawn with the toes you know when you get those toes the bottom feeling of those toes they're very triangular with the big toe the the um, the, if you will, the distal, there's no the medial, there's only three joints there of the, the big toe, so that, that medial uh, uh, tarsal there is very, very um, triangular, that's what I'm trying to say, and it's got a flat bottom to it, and it's the, hence that darker tone there. And the, the, uh, the bottoms of the rest of the toes will tend to begin to curl in somewhat and actually point back to the big toe. See how the big toe points towards the small toe slightly, leans over, and then the small, the, the rest of the toes uh, slightly, especially with the, 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 the little toe, the pinky toe, it gets almost sideways. And so you're just getting really the bottom of those shapes, and then they're like these sausagey little um, oval type blocks, the bottom of them, and you want to get those into the uh, composition too. Um, as well <clears throat> and then you're kind of you're really kind of on your way to getting you know what you want out of the out of the foot now, obviously you want to get that footprint uh, feeling to that basically you're drawing the fat pads of the foot those bursa type uh, uh, pads to, to help uh, protect the uh, metatar tarsals and the metatarsals there as well as the ligaments uh, and then some of the uh, tendons, certainly tendons underneath that area, but that footprint area, that darker part where the feet are a little bit dirty, uh, which I like to have a little bit dirty, uh, that, that shows you that you know, that really where the bottom of the foot touches the surface at all times. Of course, we get that with a footprint in the sand or a wet footprint on concrete of some or something else or some sort of um, uh, uh, sophistication like that, which which certainly happens. So getting out the outer edges here of the of the toes, getting those edges cleaned up. And I can make that dark around. I think I actually keep it lighter because I don't want to draw too much attention to the feet more than the head. So I'll leave that background space a little bit lighter later on. And that's just a design element choice that I've made or will make when we get to that further. You can darken that in. You can go, you can draw more of the of the cloth in the folds, etc., and so on, but mostly it's just a figure study. I'm just filling out that bottom of that um, couch, couch pad area, and going darker. I've got medium charcoal now. I'll use a lot of medium as I go back. Once I get the value close to where I want, I'll use the medium because it's easier to soft, keep a softer touch, and, and more blended into the spirit of the drawing, which is with the stump. And that helps a little bit, but you know, if I need to go super dark, then I'll pick up the charcoal stick, or I'll, the, the soft or extra soft charcoal pencil too as well. So picking up that dirty stump, and beginning to use the tip or the side to blend out uh, the foot there, getting that shape, the shapes of, of where I want. And then I'll go back again and erase back again and really get even even tighter one one last pass so you know working with a stump is more time consumptive certainly so and it certainly takes more patience but the results are worth it but it's going to be a longer kind of kind of drawing it's not as you know quicker a little slightly more gestural as much you might be more used to in a timed kind of classroom setting so these are great you know in french academies in the ninth, 18th and 19th century and 17 too, but but certainly in that 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 era of Romanticism, Neoclassicism, and beyond to the 
19th century, long, long, long poses to render completely were apropos for the day, and it might take you a month because you only had a certain amount of lighting for the day, uh, for the figure, north lighting, sky lit lighting, and um, then the, then once that lighting changed significantly enough, you would that would kind of be the session, probably about an hour or so, two at a time, maybe tops. And so it would take quite quite a bit of time to work in that more detailed manner. Sort of a, a out more a little bit slightly more outline, less kind of looser gestural, but still keeping the rhythm of the figure alive within the what I'll call the academic academy uh, approach to to art making in the 18th 19th centuries, and then we're still somewhat to, really today too at, at certain ateliers and. There's some here in the United States as well as in Europe and Russia. So just delineating those toe areas. Of course the camera is sped up. It is about a 13 hour drawing so I've made session two about a little over an hour to keep it reasonable and you can draw along and slow it down. or you can slow down the video. It'll slow down my audio. That might be a little annoying, but we can work together best we can. Got that outer shape of that toe. It's slightly a little clenched. And I make it a little bit more so with the angle. I kind of like that look. So I make it a little bit more tense than maybe what it is. <clears throat> almost kind of pulling the big toe in a little bit. Almost pointing it as it pulls it back down towards the pad a little bit. We'll put a little tone back here real quickly medium or softer charcoal pencil here just to get a little bit of atmosphere slightly back there against that big toe. Taking the stump. It's a pretty classic technique now. You should know that how to put down the, the tone and how it's a rougher look which which is fine. You know, people like that and then you can smooth that out with the chamois a little bit. And ultimately again if you're working with chamois you're going to want a little bit of both. Uh, some that uh, wispy blended tone and some drawing on top to integrate it better best into the drawing. You don't want to leave it just a most of the time just a, just a uh, blended um, stump tone. Now we're getting back to the top of that uh, foot as it's laying over to really set it to the side like the, the rectangular box that the foot is in this view, this view. So it's very much the top now of the, of the foot. Now turning down and we get over to the toes again. That can lead over rhythmically. And I'll cut back in with that darker pencil to give it a little bit more incisive kind of bite and also a um, really good sense of clarity with the line work and the line weight. <clears throat> Just moving along now. <clears throat> that darker area under the under the toes there. Remember that the you know session two or any of the sessions one two three and I think there'll be probably four, at least three or four. Um, the image of this uh, model, Stephen here, a larger image will be at the back of the video, so you can you can screen capture that and drag it off and and use that for the drawing. A little bit larger, the better will be good. Obviously, good to see that. <clears throat>
Again, you notice how I hold the pencil very far away from the lead now, a lot of times when I'm rendering. So it's more of a, what I call, a uh, conductor, like conducting an orchestra or an ensemble of some sort. So it's really, really leaned over and I've really got the pencil on that far, far, far tip um, quite a bit, uh, very much sideways. So it's really, really, for the most part, very easy to, to put down tone and not have to um, get too dark too quick or get tipped out too quick. So I'm narrowing that foot that bottom a little bit is a little wide there as it sits down. It's kind of there's a slight cast shadow uh, emerging on that area of the couch that he's sitting on. Getting the top of that foot there, it's got a little darkness as it turns over away from the line. Same thing with the malleolus of the angle, that little bump there, if you will. Getting that settled in and just being really mindful of what I'm seeing um, in terms of three-dimensional form and edges and value and also contrast to really get this foot to, to work well. And then lastly, I'll come over and start to render the folds as I work those folds with the eraser to get those edges more cleaned up and of course when we come back with the uh, white charcoal, the light, um, that will be the final touch over really the entire drawing. One thing you don't want to do is when you don't want to make the foot call attention more than the face and the hand or the abdomen. It's, it's really secondary or tertiary. So here I'm taking, uh, to move on, I'm taking the kneaded eraser and, and getting some of the softer kind of folding or just overall structure. And then I can go back and dig in there with the uh, Japanese mono, the smaller eraser, and really get into the tighter areas somewhat later. So it's just a refining process of whittling down, if you will, the entire drawing into more finite and more finite and tighter edge and you know where I leave the drawing in 13 hours you know for somebody who's a hyper realist you know that's going to look like a gesture and so that can go to a, uh, a quite a you know an, another level of uh, completion I, ironically but that's not the purpose generally the drawing database I'm not really hyper realist um, interested in, in those techniques since they're I assign them to my students and I've done them but I don't I don't do it a lot on YouTube because it's so so time consumptive and I think there's enough people out there that are so captivated by that that there's enough to to suffice you if you're interested. Getting the lighter areas of the darker pads, those callous pads. Separating the two distinctive pads there as they separate from the larger the big toe pad area. It's kind of like the hand, the, the thenar and hyperthenar. I don't forget what the pad names are called at, at the moment. And now you can see I'm starting to delineate some of the folds. We're not going to get, I don't want to get every single fold, but I want enough to give the appearance that there's striations and it's slightly wrinkled as the, the foot is slightly flexed. And so again, those, those uh, wrinkles, folds in the skin are nothing more than cylinders and different kinds of configurations. Some are thinner, some are thicker, some go from thin to thick and, and vice versa. turning that form on that heel and getting in there looking more deeply at the at the nature of of what we're perceiving 
It all breaks down to once you get the gesture and you've got the form, the three-dimensionality, the nature of that, it, it breaks down to light, value, edges, and contrasts. And then ultimately, we get this, this sense of texture too, don't we, as well. When we get the light, the value, and the edges correct, we get a, a feeling of the uh, illusion of uh, texture. <laughs> Finding the edge now of that outer thigh. So the, 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 the foot for the most part is, is relatively secured there. There's some fine tuning that will go on, but it's, it's got a point where it's looking, um, emerging where I want it to be. You'll see me fine tune that. And then we'll get up to the uh, top leg there that's resting uh, rather uncomfortably, I think, on that, that armrest. His leg, that calf, I love how it's it's buckled in from the weight of gravity, the weight of his leg on it. And you get that interesting cast shadow on the right. And then his neck resting on that um, armchair or the, the, the vertical part of that. Again, again, remember when looking at the, the couch, the sofa couch that we drew, I corrected the parallax. Of, see how that leans over on both sides? That's because of camera uh, parallax or slight distortion when if, if the if the photographer is slightly uh, tilted tilting the camera a little bit and so you have to be careful that when you work with images you get used to that too much you see that your normal view will be uh, a more two-point uh, in this case slight two-point uh, really one point actually since we've got a more more straightforward um, perpendicular horizontal so you have to be a little mindful. You have to be mindful of what photography can alter and then what it can do for us. And the, the easiest way to do that is to, if you're taking images uh, to yourself, is to keep your camera eye, uh, somewhat, find a fixed eye level and keep it uh, straight a view and you won't get as much parallax as well. It's only when you tilt it up and down at certain degrees you're going to get more distortion. We have a little bit going on here. You can see the foot emerging. You can see the highlight across the top plane of the foot where it starts to turn downward with that little light area. And I'm emphasizing now some of the folding and the wrinkling, enough of where I want. I don't want every single one. I wanted some of the major ones and some of the small minor ones. And I make some decisions about how much detail I, I want to use versus how much I, I'll uh, want to omit. And, and that's important. You'll have to answer that, but you'll have to subordinate all that to your, your ultimately the look or the aesthetic of what you have. Ultimately, it's going to be real, real high, high res. You might spend five days on that foot, four days on that foot. And that's not going to happen here with the drawing database just for time reasons. But you, you, want, you start to understand um, the whys of all that and how the power of drawing can be important to, uh, more important than letting the mark show than, than trying to blend it all away and take the hand away. So you see what I did with the top of the foot. I've got some darker little areas where I emphasize the turns with some dark points there on that foot. You see that from a lot of master study. I learned that from Angra, Rubens, and or others where you get, put some real strong little dark turning uh, line weight qualities uh, in your drawing to really turn turn form. You'll see me do that in some of the shoulders and other areas under the chin later on as we get to that. So now getting the edge, taking that charcoal stick, which I love, getting really getting that the, there's, a, there's a sharp edge to it. It looks very blunt there, 
But you might ask, well, how is he getting that real sharp edge? Well, there the edges on those charcoal compressed charcoal sticks when you draw in certain ways sharpen themselves, and you just tilt it over, and you can use these really cutting incisive edges. So here I've got the medium charcoal pencil, and I'm running over the calf, the gastrocnemius area, lower leg, if you will, of the model. Uh, on in the in the drawing here, and going to blend that in a moment. So I'm not using a real soft charcoal there. I'm using medium, um, which is a little easier control since I've got those lighter values on his leg. And so you can change up your charcoal usage of where, what type of of, of darkness you want to use. If it's not too dark, you might want to use a medium, or if it's really dark, you can use an extra soft or soft. So that that helps a little bit. Um, as you're working and, and blending quite a bit too as well so putting it a little dark up, up above the, the calf there <clears throat> and so just going to chamois or excuse me uh, blend that down with the stump just to pull that in the background same thing down below and let that leg start to emerge a little further in the, the kind of dark ether, if you will, the background there. And we're going to blend here. So drawing now with the stump, you can use that fine tip and you can turn it to the side and use a more broad stroke and then you can turn it way far to the side. The more horizontal you turn your hand or in wrist and you can really use a lot of broad stroke. And the dirtier it gets, the easier it is to get more tone on there. And that might be great sometimes. Sometimes you might not like it. Now, you see, once I put the tone down, I'm going to go re recapture his knee. It's a little got a little lost there. Grab that, and I'll grab his thigh and make it a little bit thicker on top there in a moment. It gets a little dip down. So you're constantly always grabbing your edges, too, as well, which is important to reconstitute them. And then, then when you blend it stump, I'll go back and say, OK, now let me erase that which I overdrew so I can get that back to um, a clear uh, resolve looking kind of soft uh, edges a little bit. I'm working above the the chair a little bit. I'm just going to let that run. Um, you can see it in the rest of the image, but I cropped in a little bit just to make it easier. So you can, the bigger we can get the drawing, the better, uh, quite frankly, too, uh, as well. <clears throat> So just turning, turning, turning there with that form, taking my kneaded eraser, that soft eraser, and sort of just stroking like I would, would a painting and dabbing and turning and making that just turn. There we go. Naturally turn and get the contour. It's really easy position to get that contour. Here's that cast shadow. I'll get the outside. It's kind of hard edge there. Uh, and we'll just indicate that a little bit further and we'll continue to take off. So it really is once you're using the stumps a very kind of additive subtractive means even though we started with that you know the olive tone of the of the paper but you know most drawing has an element of additive and subtractive qualities even if mostly it's additive um, you, you're still probably going to erase out some lights and highlights and things of that nature when I think about that, I think about uh, John Singer Sargent, American artist, uh, 19th century portrait and early 20th portrait painter of the bourgeois American um, scene, I suppose. I'm going to get the top of that thigh a little bit. That's going to have to go thicker. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, grab that thigh here in a minute. I'm not sure when I do it. We'll get, we'll get to that. You can see how we start to play, you know, we start to manipulate now the edges and the value and soft and, and see how things start to really come alive. They start to emerge quite well. I like using that charcoal stick a little bit. Once you can start to control that, you can use it quite definitely like a brush, a thick area, thin area. You can see you can turn it to the side on those edges and to kind of put a point on it on the very tip uh, around the side of an edge. So getting back behind the calf here, just cleaning that up and getting it more resolved as I 
uh, thinking about thinking about two things: the shadow shape that it makes, sort of just rectangular and triangular things. But what's making the shape? Because that's the tendon of the biceps femoris, so the back of the the uh, hamstring there. And I'm thinking three dimensionally. So I'm doing a little both, and and I'm, I'm uh, oscillating in the back of my head when I want to use that. So you can see that that thigh is starting to really turn there as well. We'll start to lift that up. Take that off and contour, cross contour around that leg a little bit to get that to turn back towards the knee further. In the top of his, right where his shorts end on the very top leg, where his leg begins, that needs that needs to go a little thicker. I'll, I'll make it so, but it's annoying. I'm like, when am I going to get to that? <laughs> I see an error. I want to change that. I don't like that error. That doesn't work. Now the head, I the head I have a little lower. I don't mind that at all. It gives it kind of deeper rhythm. It sinks into the to the back. So, anyway, medium charcoal. Uh, digging further into where that muscle really ends the bulginess of it, where it gets more of a crevasse, go a little darker there, using medium charcoal pencil, turning it to the side. And I'll, I flip it around in my hand a little bit so it stays kind of sharp um, every so often. And what that does is you do that evenly, it kind of sharpens the tip a little bit. It's funny how that is, because you're basically drawing, when you, when you draw your scratching material onto a surface, right? So it's rubbing off. Getting that edge and leaving a little space between the final edge because there's a little reflected light there as it turns. But you can see how the feet and the legs are getting clear. Compare it to now to the, to the uh, abdomen and the head and, and that area and you can see how much uh, clear now things are. Things are what what's happening essentially. There we go. Finally, get to it. See how it's bulgy, comes bulging out. There it goes. A little bit fuller in that muscle form. That's good. Good correction there. Good job. Want to make that? That was a minor, easy one also to to uh, to utilize as well. So pressing on here, working the back of the leg, a little bit more of a core, darker shadow. And this is the fun stage when you get into these very minute, uh, you know, tightenings or controllings of the, of the form to that stage where you're like, wow, it's really starting to emerge now. So you really get a sense through the videos through and what's important for me to teach my students both here and in NKU and also in YouTube land is the process, how things are made. We don't, we don't get that all the time, even when I was a student. Most of the time I did. We, we luckily had really good professors in Los Angeles. When I was an undergrad especially, that, that, that was part of the, of the magic and the craft is to show how every, the sausage is made, if you will, how things are actually done from start to finish. And that's why it's important to have these longer videos, or at least in general to have them sped up and also narrated so you hear that. And that's something again that we didn't have. So going back to the stump now, you can see I'm going to go and add a little dark to that curve, and it's too, it's going to be too dark, but I wanted that because I want to be able to softly erase it back and keep that real transition as the bulge of that calf starts to turn um, and down the shaft of the leg, and then can fade away from uh, the light a little bit. So it's close there. 
and it'll take the kneaded eraser and again use it as a very much a stamping tool and just dab at it, dab at it. And the dirtier that it, that is, the the less charcoal it takes off, and so it's again it's drawing with the eraser. And, and the cleaner it is, the more it takes off. And you'll you'll learn to say, hey, I want it a little cleaner, or I want it a little a little dirtier. So that way you can you can get the kind of the kind of look that that you want or, or the value that you want. <clears throat> and so it's just a, a, a wonderful little meticulous process at this point. And you're, you're, the more you know about anatomy helps here, especially so. Um, it, it's not the uh, cure-all, but I could start, okay, that's the biceps femoris tendon there. Maybe it's going to be lit a little bit. Lit, uh, and then underneath that is where the gastrocnemius comes into play. There's that crease in the back of the leg to give the leg movement. Things, things of that nature. But ultimately, what I'm still thinking about is a cylinder uh, turning, flowing around. What, where is it lit from? What are the, what is the edges that I need soft versus the harder, crisper, if you will, outside edges? All of those things play a, a very key role, very very key role. Um, in the outcome of the drawing, to be sure. <clears throat> Using the kneaded eraser, caressing and curving that leg over right where the cast shadow starts, and of course the cast shadow ends where the end of the leg is a little bit and just let it fade off. Kind of let that fade in the drawing there, kind of way I'm doing it. Taking the medium charcoal there and just giving extra, a little extra tone there to get what I want. It's a real back and forth, a give and take, if you will, of, of, um, the drawing. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means really um, getting the, the, the exact look you want, the right form, the right shadow, the right edges, and you keep working it until you get, you get it there. And working that lower calf as it touches that armrest and, and then grabs the lower medial part of the uh, calf downward and it's, the rest is pushed up a little bit and it's starting to feel really good good through there where I'm at with the uh, with the edges and the value um, to, to create the form pretty pretty solidly there <clears throat> Very minor change there. Notice how I use the the tip of the triangle for hard edge when I need it against the a man-made structure. <clears throat> Putting on the fi finality of that. It's getting close there. And then later on, that'll get a little bit of the white charcoal, white chalk to really lighten up just slightly where I need it. We'll talk about that in session four, about using, session three or four, about using that uh, white chalk or drawing with light and not to over illuminate. It's very easy to over illuminate. It can be very ten intense very quickly if you don't. <clears throat> Just keep working it, getting softer and softer to about where we want it. So it's not just the stump, but it's a combination, isn't it, of stumping and erasing and drawing to get the look that you want in a, in a slower, 
uh, drawing for sure. There's no doubt about it. So hang out of the course of that. Once you get the hang of it, it may take a while. You know, stay the course with that. And you'll get rewarded by some really interesting, unique, soft kind of blending. So I'm now working, now I'm going to back, go back to the head. So the lower body is kind of well set. So now we'll go back to the head and reposition his head a little bit. Change his a little. He's tilted lower than it is in the image. And I'm, I've, I've noticed that uh, or way earlier. I, thought, I, don't, I don't mind it at all. And, and so I'm, I don't like part of the, the proportion of the head. So I needed to change that. So we're going to spend some time here on the, on the head and through here. So let's see if we can go in a little bit deeper. Let's, let's help our audience out. Can we do that? Let's try that. So there we go. That gets it popped up. And a little bit closer to the camera. You can see how... Um, get a little bit closer to that head and see what I'm thinking about. So we're still refining. So I'm using a medium charcoal pencil here. And refining. I'm thinking about the... Uh, uh, skull, obviously, in the uh, the eye sockets there, getting the shadow shapes rather than worrying about the detail. The detail will come when we draw back in the shadow shapes. So don't try to draw detail in them yet. Try to get their major components down as we're working with a smaller lid head here in working full value. I try to look, especially this drawing for the shadow patterns, to to help find them. To get that head more position or cleanly, and then I'll work a little bit of this outside tone so I can really so you can see how that dark really kind of frames the head a little bit. So we'll get that out there with some of the charcoal charcoal stick in there too, and that'll give us an opportunity to blend this out, stump this over. Just a better better looking head, even though I've got him a little tilted over than than what I had it before. You can you, you remember, remember you always have the right to make changes anytime that that you want depending upon what you like and what you don't, and sometimes you you might not be completely accurate, but but it might make a better drawing, and so that's a that's something to learn. We're not again we're not making copies. We're analyzing, and interpreting form and in the. The, these techniques all through the drawing database, especially in the figure, give you that best chance to do that. It's not a sight sizing, measuring kind of thing, which would take you know, a drawing like this might take 30 hours or 20, maybe 25. I don't know. I'm not a big sight size guy, but if you are, it's okay. Or a person, sight size person. <laughs> so, cleaning up the head. It's very gestural, kind of um, impressionistic right now. Loose, and we'll tighten that up. You'll see how we'll go from. A looser form to a tighter form, but it's all in the beginning. It was about getting the, the shape and form of the head, and then finding those shadow patterns to anchor it down, right? And then still thinking 3D, and then start thinking about the side plane of the head, which is right there where see that the highlight um, on his brow, and it goes to the to the forehead, really shining and down the head there. That's the temporal lobe region of the side, really true side plane of the head, and that's why that that um, the light hits it, it. It's hitting it at 45 degrees and turns turns the head uh, sideways quite quite nicely. And that's something I'm looking at, and we'll emphasize that later on, of course, with the drawing, especially again as we get to the white chalk uh, pencil, which always is the fun part, right? You get to see that uh, really illuminate, but it it comes later on. Uh, generally, I, I, I wait and have my students wait till later on once they get all of their darker values and mid-tone values. Now, what's interesting about this drawing, so when I'm working with the toned paper, that anything lighter than the paper, I'll leave because I can't draw lighter than that. But anything slightly darker than that mid middle value of green tone, I'm going to draw on the uh, surface with charcoal. And so that's something that you have to be aware of. We've, we've done this in the basic section quite a bit and so if you're if you're unfamiliar with the uh, tone paper just go back and take a look at that with simple uh, still life objects in the future I'll be doing some more still life so it'll be more uh, more difficult more either intermediate kinds of kinds of things that we want to we want to do a little bit so just erasing getting that head the forehead cleaned out we'll put a little bit of touch of hair on him uh, that he's got short hair at the top and uh, you know, T. Steven, he's starting to lose a little bit of that forehead 
uh, hair. He's not even, I don't think Steven's 25, 26. And so sometimes uh, the fellows lose their hair earlier than they want to. I kind of tease him because I've got this nice big halo type of thing going on in my, in my hair practice, <laughs> if you will. All right, I'll get off that subject. All right, so I'm using the uh, charcoal stick to get some of the, very loosely, the edges. Notice it's big, it's blunt, but how do I get that small, those small lines by using the very tip uh, edge of that? It's very, kind of a long line and or any sharp point on the, on the stick that I can. Now I'm gonna go tighten up here. We're gonna find the brow area where the eyebrow sits on top, kind of these curvature structures, a little darker as we see that. So we move over and through here. <clears throat> Curve that over. Smoothing it out with the stump, blending what I drew there to, to blend that together. Still drawing. You can see the difference, differentiation of the value, but it gives it that smooth look that we want. So that gets a very general feeling. It's a light and dark pattern of the skull structure of the eye sockets, which tend to look like kind of like sunglasses until we put more detail in them. So that general kind of sense. And that your glasses are your indication that your head truly is a block because the eye the eyepiece changes 90 degrees to go back to the ear. The earpiece is at 90 degrees and so we have a front plane of our head and then a side plane which is at 90 where the ear and the hair are on the back of that. So again we're working the edges of the ear quality here. outer edge of the ear, the inner edge here. Get the shape, that sort of C shape, and we can change that later on, make some, make some strong moves to get it as close as we can. Such a small area, you don't get every detail. You want to get the bigger picture of it. And you notice I'm not bumping the engine image up. I stopped doing that because I don't, I think it's a little dangerous to be when you're when you have an a, when you're working from an image like we are like a photograph and you assume there's a certain distance that you want to maintain well the detail uh, is is um, hyper detail is eliminated because you can't get close to it um, if you're doing that in a drawing and you're trying to bump up the magnitude on your image back and forth it can it can frustrate your eye a little bit because you ultimately want to keep it consistent so you know, we're about seven or eight uh, American feet or feet English system away from the the uh, the figure, and we want to keep that that feeling. So if I magnitude up his head to his ear size in the image, we would see much more greater detail than we need to see. So be careful when you do that. Um, just know that you're doing it, and if you're okay with that, that's fine. But I think I want to make sure that my students here at school and also in YouTube land, you guys understand, everybody understands that there's a certain distance you get to the model and you're not going to really get closer just for etiquette purposes. You can get further away, but closer for etiquette purposes of privacy, obviously, and, and personal uh, you know, geography and integrity. Unless you're intimately, you know that person, that's a different story. But ultimately, you'll, you'll maintain a, a stable distance and you won't change that. So, but if you keep magnifying your, your image that you're drawing from, from, then you're going to change the relationship and you might over detail an area that, that doesn't need it compared to the rest of the drawing. So, so here we are with a kind of the head, you can kind of get a vision of of, of how that's coming along. It's getting tighter, but still got a long way to go to 
obviously to be resolved there. We'll jump back in here. <clears throat> working the tube of the neck and so when I worked in this image off camera there's a big desktop above well in front of this drawing but up above it in the camera there and it's got a screen of about I don't know 20 28 inches across maybe 30 so it's big and I've got his image there blown up not blown up but full full figure on the image I want to get everything in and I don't magnify it I leave it I leave it there and so that gives the approximation of being in front of the live model I'm a big fan of being in front of the live model for a lot of time I'm also a big fan of doing master studies drawing from their images I'm a big fan of drawing just from uh, photographic references like we have or Crokey Cafe or others uh, I think all of it's valid to be honest the when the uh, the Renaissance training artist was one done by the master studies it wasn't until a, a apprentice had had well matured uh, that they were put in front of a live model um, and for reasons again of propriety with a young child with an adult or a younger teenager in front of an adult male or female would be nude would be problematic even even for then um, but um, you certainly got in front of the live model when you were ready to and old enough but you, the reason why drawings look stylistically very similar for long periods of time is that ha that's how artists were purposely trained to adapt and adopt to the style the dominant stylistic um, uh, placeholder, if you will, from masters like Michelangelo and Raphael, Leonardo, and some of the dominant Pontormo, Caravaggio. When you hear followers of followers of Rembrandt, who adopted um, a very similar kind of stylistic approach. Well, you know, along comes the the 19th and 20th century, and those kind of individualism becomes even more important. And so, we don't have that as much. So we put we put students in front of the model pretty early which is which is more difficult because the model moves some but I do like working from the images as well both are, are, are very valid within the right context the 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 ultimate goal is to make sure that you're drawing and learning three to how to use three-dimensional techniques to bring that about so you can see the head emerging you can see the shadow patterns emerge we don't have a lot of detail, but I'm really working on getting these midtone values to work, um, getting all the, the relevant parts located within the head, getting the edges uh, properly, mm, uh, roughly uh, laid in as we go further. And then you'll see we can take this head in the time uh, we have and we'll get uh, tighter and, and tighter and tighter with it as we whittle it down. And that takes them. Um, stumping and then it takes blending adding additives processes and then also the processes of of uh, subtraction which we're doing here now with the uh, Japanese mono erasers we take off uh, material here and get these brows these brow protrusions on the skull to come out So we're rhythmically moving around the curvature of the head, which is so important.
take on the, uh, the curtain areas of those just to help frame his head a little more fully there. It gives it a nice light and dark framing changing over. I'm switch over here back. Let's go back deeper again if we can, please. Here we go. Here we go, back into to a, a close-up view here, and we're going to see the head emerge more detailed here. So let's another about uh, 15 or so minutes to work on that. Working in the ear, it's a little bit pointed at the top, so I'll work that just a bit. I'll work that shape back a little bit later. So let's get in there and take a look at how we render out the head. Thinking about the light and dark shadow pattern, but getting tighter with my, my elements to get them closer to a more accurate reading of the figure. <clears throat> you can see that Japanese mono eraser. It's kind of a rectangular little shaft with a thinner edge and then a broader stroke. I'm using that thinner edge. And I'm looking at the structure of the head, the mouth region, nose region, working those shadow patterns. We don't need every detail, so we've got to eliminate that. So you want to keep your image a little bit at a distance to help you out. But we can pop out the drawing larger so you can see that. So you can see the chin emerging there. So that's still pretty much a two-toned, three-toned uh, head study there. Clean up that outer edge a little bit where it's lighter against the hand, against the cloth curtain. And see how the brows is, the darker parts of that outer brow are popping out. In the, in the cheekbone too, it's nice because it's framed against that lighter area of the curtain, which is that dark against that light. That's that Oreo cookie I talk about a lot, dark against the light, right? Both are, both are important. <laughs> So you can see me get more detailed within the image, getting the reflected light underneath the cheek there, the jaw, the hairline a little bit further, and it's simply you know incising through, and you know I'll go additive and I'll go subtractive and here. I'll, I'll try to leave it quiet here a little bit, let you take a look. Figuring out the ball of the eye, pupil iris, a little reflected light in there. <clears throat> it has almost a surprise kind of look, just slightly. So in there I'm getting the, all that's reflected light within the shadow, those lighter areas. I want to get those to be very simple, one or two value uh, passages. And we don't want it, all kinds of slight little changes, very small areas, so it can be simplified there. So just working the digits of that brow to put that deeper dark in there. Blend that over just a little bit, keep it softer. Whenever I feel like there's too much texture, it's out of character, I'll soften it down. some more, just a process of doing both. Okay, getting down to a nice Softed transition of those skin tones in mid middle light there. <laughs> A 
So it's in UCI overdraw a little bit and I'll go back and erase out where the highlights go. It's a really simple way to get what you want out of your your drawing practice. Not all the time, but it's a really simple way to use a little bit of additive and subtractive instead of drawing around things all the time, around highlights, which is really difficult uh, to do and less accurate, quite frankly, than draw what I call drawing through the, the uh, darker value. We we'll just call it drawing through the dark, <laughs> allowing yourself to draw through the, the shadow form to get to the uh, lighter areas. And you can work the edges a little bit. So I'm working that side plane of the head where that highlight's going to be. You can see how it's getting tighter. Compare the compare this to about 20 minutes ago in the in the the video time frame about where the head was and where it is now. Finding that highlight there. At least the it's still not light as it will be. Everything is still in a state of middle tone value. Slight little gyrations of the hair on the edge there a little bit. I thought about maybe leaving the other eye like that, but it looks like he's winking at us, and I thought maybe that's a little bit too silly. So I didn't do it. I'm glad I didn't. So what's left now is the uh, some of the hair in the face, the eye closest to us, and then the uh, shape of the nose further, the mouth to get just the uh, feeling of the uh, teeth in there. Just a couple of flicks of the eraser, we'll get that. <clears throat> so we've got a little bit, a little bit less than ten minutes left in this session, session two. And you know, you notice that triangle on my hand. Do you see that? When I come over to my palm, you see that a lot. That's my mall stick. So that piece of plastic, I'm holding it down on the surface, but I've got it raised up a little bit. So my forearm and my palm, it sits on top of that and doesn't smear, blend, or smudge. So that's how you keep your drawing clean. That's got to be something that you are become aware of and manage is that the the factor of crafts, craftsmanship, which we talk a lot about at the undergraduate level at your university. Our university experience here is good, excellent craftsmanship that everybody can practice. Some might be better at, at a particular skill set or have a stronger vision, but everybody can utilize good craft. So now blending through the eye, now we're going to really get deep into its particular structure there. Further. <clears throat> to refresh my computer it looks like there we go oh, I was sharpening that's right sometimes I forget what I was doing sharpening the pencil just a little bit so we'll get the outer edge of that eye a little bit where that eye comes in, just thinking about the eyeball, rounded part, and looking at those shadow shapes, thinking cheekbone structure, brow a little bit, a little darker, close to the highlight. Getting all that to start to work. So we're going to get in there and we're going to find that pupil and iris that's going to give us the beginning marks. We want to go too terribly dark or too terribly light um, in that shadow. So let's take a look. Get that edge a little lighter there between. Gonna find a little little more dabbing in that around the nose, brow, shadow area. Pick out the eyebrow just a little bit further. There's just a little bit of an eyelid kissing over, and now let's see here, tightening that up. Go back to the eraser. And then I'm ready, you'll see me hit the pupil iris, just kind of a, a disc. In there that will anchor that expression up there. There it comes. Finally, there it is. And just kind of build it over. And it needs a little reflected light in the out wide of the eye. We'll hit that in a moment. Just a touch. We don't want to overdo it. 
getting those edges to work. So it gets cleared up a little bit there. And I don't think I even actually do much more to the reflected light in that eye. Or do I? Did I lie? Let's see. Just maybe a touch. I'm going to soften that cheekbone a little bit. It turns a little harshly on that. And we'll go a little lighter too as well as we start to really get the the head to start to emerge further. About five or six more minutes in the video. That's about another probably 20 minutes or so of uh, in a uh, fast sped up real time. The lips are a little darker there. They separate from the teeth. It's a little darker in the shadow there. <clears throat> you find that inner part of the mouth, which will help with the teeth. We just want an indication of the teeth there. We don't want every tooth. Just a little flick or two, and we bring those out. Kind of a little dash of light, and we're good there. So we get that real strong turn, the rounded quality of the mouth. It's very much like a tennis ball or a racquetball. Everything pulls around to the side and also down to the mouth. Coarse shadow on the chin a little bit. That's going to blend. And we can go back and reconstitute those edges. Get that to glow a little bit. You need that cork shadow right there, a little darker. See how that makes the reflected light and the shadow pop out a little further. Gives you that turn that you want to work those edges. No easy task, especially in a small space. Work the stump a little bit to blend it, smooth it out. And soften up the light edges a little bit with a kneaded eraser. There's all kinds of ways to blend and soften with the stump and also with the eraser and take them. And my mono, mono eraser and get a little bit stronger with the reflected light, barely pushing down just a little to soften that up. See how that glows a little bit. And take that edge, scissor that edge, get a little bit tighter with that bottom edge with that little black marker too. Get where the jaw really turns underneath where it folds with that strong mark. Indicating the nostril passages there in the back of the cartilage of the, the nostril there. We don't overdraw there, we indicate with the right Tipping values, it takes a while to get that. But we'll clean that out a little bit. We'll soften this up and get the light that we need through there. The philtrum, that space in between the nose and the mouth, the upper lip, a little trough there, came up and merged. It's all additive, subtractive, stumping, blending, refining edges, refining value. And then once we're done with the head, we'll move through the abdomen. That'll be the next session. And then we'll move to add light with the charcoal chalk pencil. <clears throat> Tightening and refining. See how it's starting to emerge now? And it was all, you know, you keep the image at a certain level so you get the certain amount of detail. You don't want to see, we don't want to see freckles on the nose and worry about getting freckles or any kind of moles or blemishes. We don't, that's not, we're too far away from that. 
unless we're doing a close-up so we can get this node structure. That's getting close to where it wants to be. We'll get some of the neck into here, core shadow and folds of that. So that's getting about where you know we need that to be. So I kind of worked the drawing from both of the extreme ends and worked to the middle. It's funny how I did that. This was fun to do. I haven't used stump in quite a bit. I thought, well, let's see what happens. Let's put it on camera, and if it stinks, then you know we won't have to. I won't put it on. I won't, you know, narrate it or edit it. But it worked out well. I like I like using this technique. We'll do again. We'll do some more with graphite. We'll try to mimic a Degas sort of uh, French atelier academic approach, 19th century, middle of the 1860s, 70s, something like like that, France with graphite and stump. They used it quite well. A Bougereau, if you know who Bougereau is. So we can outline, just get this dark area around the, the shoulder a little cleaned up. Well, I think we're, that we're about ready now to let this video uh, end for our session. Makes it more manageable. And then we'll go on to session three. Session three, you'll see us work. I'll work down, not us, I'm drawing. Work down the arm and work down the abdomen uh, as well and get to the the hand in the back of his head there as well and then really push on with the fourth session which will be the white chalk. Alright, I'll see you guys there.